Hello, this is uh, Dave, and welcome uh, to Equity Story. I hope you're well, and uh, yeah, good to see a little bounce to the markets, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, as we always say, general share advice and not personal, and uh, please read the disclaimer. Thank you very much. So, um, listen, we're having a good little bounce, and I'm going to have a look at, uh, you can have a look at our market. There's the uh, XGO, and bouncing absolutely beautifully. And I think what's helped the back, that little bounce is the RBA just taking their foot off the pedal a little bit with that 25 basis points. Um, the argument is, you know, did they do the right thing? It was interesting today, ANZ have come out and they've actually lifted their interest rate price forecast. They reckon interest rates are going to go up to 3.6% now. So I don't know if that was a, like a little bit of a stab in the back to the RBA saying, hey, mate, you know, you've got this a little bit wrong. You've... Uh, you shouldn't have done this. There's going to be more pain down the track later. Um, I think I tend to be on the side of the ANZ. And uh, I think the RBA have taken their foot off a little bit uh, too soon. And anyway, who trusts the RBA? I mean, is this the same guy that told us uh, last year interest rates weren't going to move to for four years? I mean, I don't think they've, they've, they, they've really had their, their finger on the pulse too well. So... I hope I'm wrong. Please, please, I do hope I'm wrong because nobody wants high interest rates. But I just don't see any slowdown on this inflation at the moment. And I don't, I don't see a bigger slowdown, uh, a big enough slowdown yet of the Australian economy to uh, uh, with the interest rates. I mean, I'm still seeing fairly decent uh, property numbers. I'm still seeing pretty good uh, uh, production numbers and retail numbers coming out of Australia. And unfortunately, for this to get slowed down, we need to uh those interest rates possibly need to go up quite a bit more um but let's make uh, make hay why we got it and there are some little moves on the market and you know good to see uh newcrest we put on as a trade you know starting to do the right thing it's time to pivot and uh potentially uh we could make some money there uh deg unfortunately in a trading hall with a capital raise S sometimes that can happen uh, but again, it's still, I think gold's having that nice little move up, isn't it, at the moment, and having that little pump up. So I think uh, if you're in some of these gold plays, and if you actually look, you look at that, the gold chart. Well, I mean, in, in Aussie gold terms, right, are these Aussie gold producers, are, are pretty, they're not too far off. They may be sort of uh, $200 off record highs. I mean, they're doing extremely well. So, you know what, I mean go gold at the moment i mean some of these uh gold plays have been sold off really heavily like uh ncm you know they come down from what 28 dollars down to 17 and the prices haven't hardly moved say la vie say la vie so i think a good little trade there and and um and i think uh, it will be will do well on it uh, again good see uh mineral resources again we put on, we put it as a trading idea the other day and I, I, we saw a good broker upgrade from uh, on mineral resources um, from UPS, I think around uh, 83. So if you're in the trade, keep holding it. And again, that price action is excellent so far this week and possibly could go a little bit higher. Um, now, when we do these daily videos, you know, we're in the money business. That's what we're in. So we're trying to look at some stocks where we can make some money. And there's a few. I don't want to go through too many, but there's a few today I want to have a look at. The... Uh, the first one is uh, TYR. Now, there's rumours a major Australian bank are possibly interested in acquiring TYR. Um, maybe could be rumours. It could be NAB, and and you know there's talk is that the general rumours, and this is just rumours. So uh, it could be around that two dollars to two fifty. You know, I get it. Maybe the downside from here isn't going to be too. You know, it's not a bad uh, performing company at the moment. And, I get it, have a little nibble at this and see what, if anything pops out in the next uh, three or four weeks. Um, you know, you might be uh, uh, pleasantly uh, surprised. So uh, just a little uh, trading idea there, really. Um, but what I do like is the oil price moves at the moment. You can see oil moving up uh, nicely and getting another little bo boom up. And you've got, uh, here you've got Woodside with a really nice little buy signal now. If Woodside looks like that, by the end of the week, I'd be buying it. I think that price action looks excellent, and possibly that will be a trade on Friday. It's only two days away, 
And I'll tell you what I'm liking as well, Oz Forex. Look at the price action of Oz Forex, how, how it hasn't really hardly broken trend. It did there a little bit, but it's held trend beautifully. And now again, possibly a really bullish or buy signal by the end of the week. So two good stories there that I think if we if we'll see where they are in two days time, if they look good, we got I think uh, we could go for that trade and try and make some money with them. Um, but like I said, I'm happy with mineral. I'm happy with Newcrest and I'm happy or I'm not happy DEG are raising, but I'm still happy if you're in it. And maybe if the race is a little bit low, that gives you an opportunity to get into the stock at a little bit of a better price. Um, news today, uh, LRS, little lithium play. Would I buy it? It's, it's early days, some fairly okay results. I don't think it was groundbreaking. Um, SRG, a 40 million uh, contract and just holding trend. Like I said uh, a few nights ago on, or even last night with Claude, I mean, if I was in that story, I'd be holding it. Um, BHP, quite interesting because I get a lot of people uh, ask us uh, about BHP. Uh, you know, is it a hold or is it a, um, is it a sell? And what was interesting is that, and I think I might read these to you because uh, it just shows you sometimes it can, uh, can quite be quite difficult. So there's two broker upgrades. One was an upgrade, one was a downgrade on BHP. And Macquarie had an outperform on BHP. And what Macquarie said, they're very impressed with the ramp up of BHP's group's uh, South Flake with a project delivered on time and on budget and twice as fast as its Jimberly Bar ramp up. BHP Group expects South Frank to sustainably achieve production of 80 million tons annually within three years, which is in line with McCoy's base case forecasts. So they, they're liking some of the news that's coming out of BHP at the moment, and they've listed their target price to $45. Um, however, uh, UBS are, are neutral, and they've, lift, they've lowered their target price to $35. And their argument is, is that they see lower forecast of base metals and the bulks in the in the medium term and they say changing supply and demand dynamics result in higher forecasts for lithium prices and higher long-term price estimates for coal aluminium zinc and lead the broker points out prices for most commodities are still above cost support levels and do not yet yet and do not yet fully price in a recession short-term iron or copper price forecasts are lowered so they're sort of a little bit like we are. We're seeing the slowdown in China, and UBS has, I think, across the board has lowered their, their their valuations for a lot of these sort of commodity plays. So, I'm more when I look at the two, I think I'm more on the side of 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 uh, UBS that uh, rather than Macquarie that I think these prices could go lower. But again, if you are in it for a dividend stock, I think the dividend could potentially hold up reasonably well in this environment. Um, and uh, you know that's why it's always important you've got to know why you're in the story are you in it for the dividend are you in it for trade and uh, and then you can make a decision what you want to do with it um there were two other forecasts which i thought were really interesting uh because they were they were pretty strong and the first one is uh, cpu so mccoy has got an outperform on cpu uh with a target price of 36 dollars so that's a huge, that's a 43% upside from here. And what McCoy, is, they've said, they've updated uh, its outlook for computer share with current bank bill swap rates and bond yield forecasts implying 7% and 34% upside to margin income forecast through to FY25. McCoy has lifted its estimates according, accordingly and ahead of consensus. So they've gone before the other brokers and they're really sort of um, betting, well, they're not betting, their opinion is these uh, uh, margins are, are going to be uh, extremely st much stronger for them moving forward. So, you know, when you look at the price action, certainly the price action looks superb and you wouldn't have any problem with maybe an idea of having a look at that for a trade. Um, you know, the only danger, I know these times are tough and you've got to have a tight stop on it. But I, I, certainly if you look at that and you look at it for a risk reward, and you're thinking, well, hold on a second, could I buy this at 25.66? And I could put a stop loss at maybe 23.29. And uh, I'm not going to target 36, but maybe I'll I'll target just under 30, 29.90, and uh, look for a trade there. So that's a little trade for you. 
uh, if you want to have a look at uh, computer share. And, and I'll tell you what, what an amazing, even this difficult period we've had, we've got to be one of the best ASX 200 charts and it's held up absolutely beautifully. And an interesting uh, valuation there with Macquarie, an interesting upgrade. And I think that's arguably most probably well worth having a trade. Um, the other one I thought was quite interesting was KAR. So, you know, again, they've had a target price of 290 on these. Uh, but there are rumors of possibly a capital raise and they're going to buy something. But you've got to like the share price action. The share price action looks very, very good. And I think that's another one. I'm going to put that one with Osphorix and Woodside. And I think if that's one's looking like it is, maybe by the end of the week, we can have a trade on this one. And like I said, it's only two days, two days away. Um, so one trade today, happy with what we put on recently. One trade today, that's CPU. Possibly we're going to have a look at Osphorex and Woodside and Car on Friday as a trade. If this market starts bouncing up a little bit harder. Um, but all in all, I think the general feeling is this is just a little bit of a bounce. Certain areas I quite like. Um, I think certain little business models are doing very, very well. Uh, but generally, you've got to be very, very careful still at the moment. Uh, saying that, um, I hope you watched RC Analysts last night with Claude. Amazing. What a, what an analyst he is. And I've got him again on Friday. So Friday with Claude Walker. Um, brilliant, brilliant. And I think we were up to 9 o'clock last night answering all the questions. So very, very good. And, and well worth It's on the website. So please go and watch RC Analysts last night. We talked about heaps of stocks. Well, I didn't really talk about anything because he just talks and talks and talks. But he was very interesting to listen to. And what a fantastic analyst. We're very lucky, I'll tell you what, to have people like him and the Wolf. Very lucky every story. Maybe the uh, best analyst, I think, in Australia, in my opinion. I'm not biased. No, definitely not biased. All right. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye-bye.